astronomy is dangerous. When I step outside at night, the first thing I do is look up in the sky to see if it's clear, to see what the stars are. <coughs> and then I trip on the front stair again, but I can't help it. I will never lose my fascination with the night sky. Remember what it's like to be far from city lights on a warm summer night under the stars? It can be almost frightening. The stars are so vivid and real. And it used to be that way for everyone, for all time. Today, few of us shared that experience with the stars. We take them for granted. We don't think about them. I'd like to help bring back some of the wonder we once shared. Take the stars a little less for granted, to look up, to find something new, and maybe wonder, could the sun have a companion star like Tatooine does? That's crazy. Tatooine has two big, beautiful suns that orbit each other quickly. Clearly our sun doesn't have that. But our sun might just have a distant, faint companion that we have overlooked, even though it is shining in plain sight for almost any telescope to see. How could that be? Two reasons. We can only measure the distance to a tiny fraction of all the stars in the sky, and the method we use to select those stars can easily overlook a companion star. So why is it so difficult to measure the distance of stars? And why do we even care? We care because that's the only way to convert a pinprick of light in the sky into a real physical object that has mass and energy output. And from that we can figure out how stars work, how long they live, and what happens to them when they die. And that extends to galactic evolution, the large-scale structure of the universe, and all the way back to the Big Bang. Much of physics and astronomy rests fundamentally on measuring the distances to nearby stars. So how do we do it? The same way you're doing it right now with depth perception. Look at a distant object from two points of view and see how the background shifts. Astronomers just do it a little bit differently. Use a telescope to find a star and take a picture. And then just wait while the Earth takes you to the other side of the sun and take another picture. And compare those two pictures. There'll be a slight shift in the background. That slight shift is called the parallax angle and tells you the distance. Astronomers have a big problem though. The size of that shift is tiny beyond belief so that only the best telescopes can barely measure it for only a few of the closest stars. To give you an idea how small that angle is, consider a telescope 500 miles from here pointed at this lightsaber and accurately measuring as I move the lightsaber back and forth by only a few inches. That's the accuracy needed. Now let me tell you about the telescopes that we need to do this. We need a telescope like this baby here. This one has a 38 foot long tube, a 24 inch lens, and sits under a gigantic copper dome. This is the telescope I used for many years, taking those pictures of the stars to measure distances. Each picture or observation takes about 30 minutes to an hour, with me at the telescope the entire time guiding the process. Each shift at the telescope lasts between seven hours in a warm summer evening to 13 hours on a cold, frigid January morning. A telescope dome is not heated. To stay warm, I wore a World War II bombardier suit 
that plugged into the wall like an electric blanket. That suit had never been washed since 1945. The black box on the end is a camera that used photographic film still. The film was not the flimsy plastic strip you might remember, but a 5 by 7 plate of glass like this with photographic emulsion on one side. When I loaded the camera in the pitch dark, I had to make sure that the emulsion side faced out to the sky. If I put it in backwards, by mistake, the photograph would be ruined. When it's 20 degrees outside, my fingers were numb and I couldn't tell by feel what side had the emulsion. But I could tell if I tasted it. A telescope like this can measure the distances to hundreds, thousands of stars. And that may seem like a lot, but it's not. It's a tiny fraction. We need to be very careful how we choose what stars to measure. Here are the candidates, all the stars in the sky. What we'd love to have is a filter to put up in front of the sky and flick a switch and all the stars that are too distant fade away, leaving just the stars that are close enough to measure. And such a filter exists. It's easy to use, reliable, and has a flaw. It can overlook a companion star to the sun. The filter works like this. When we look up at the sky, the stars look as if they're fixed, but they're not. The nearby stars are moving across the sky. We can't see that with our eyes, but it's easy to measure with a telescope. This movement is called proper motion. Stars that are far away are moving just as much, but because they're so far away, we cannot detect that movement. They have zero proper motion. So there's the filter. Find the stars that have high proper motion and measure their distance. Ignore the stars that have zero proper motion. And measuring proper motion is easy. Just compare two pictures of the same part of the sky taken many years apart. Like these two here. Can you see what's different between them? I can't either. But I had a device called a blink comparator that superimposes each image on top of each other and rapidly flips between them. You can see those two stars dancing back and forth. They have moved across the sky by that much in just a few years. They have high proper motion, measured their distance. All the other stars that are fixed, they have zero proper motion. Ignore them. But what if that star that I circled in red actually were a companion to the sun. It's traveling in space with our sun. It will show little or zero proper motion. We won't realize that it's nearby. We won't realize that it could be a companion to the sun. But this is exactly what a companion to the sun would be like. Although it is our partner, we don't realize it and think that it is just another faint anonymous star to ignore. So there are two reasons we can overlook a companion star. But there's good news afoot. One of those two reasons has just gone away. The Gaia Astrometric Observatory is on station right now beyond the dark side of the moon. Oh, not that image. Next slide, please. Gaia will soon measure up to one billion nearby stars, regardless of whether they show any movement in space or not. We don't need that filter anymore. We can cross off the second reason. The first reason is still in force. One billion stars is still a tiny fraction. Gaia will soon either find that one of these billion stars is a companion to the sun, or show that a companion to the sun is very unlikely. 
Astrometric observatories like Gaia never get any attention, never get any love. Search for Gaia ESA and learn more about this mission. Follow it on Twitter, download the iPhone app. And I invite you to spend a little time tonight to look up at the stars, to look for something new. But for heaven's sake, be careful. Astronomy is dangerous.